Hi everyone, welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises in his name, to be joyful before him, and to always remember him for his great things that he has done, for the marvelous works that he has done, and to always keep them in our hearts as long as we live. Amen. Praise the Lord. So before I get started, I want to welcome all the new subscribers and welcome those of you who are stopping by. I pray that the living water will flow forth into your cups and that you will be nourished up by the Holy Spirit and that your ears be opened to the sound of his voice. So before I get started, I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, I come to you with joy in my heart and humbleness of spirit, humbleness of mind. Lord, as I prepare my heart in prayer to you, giving you my heart in this message, and that in exchange, you would give me your heart, that your spirit would bear witness to the spirits of those, the spirit of each person that will be hearing this message. And that, Lord, you will guide me in the way, in the way of wisdom. And that, Lord Jesus, that they would hear the sound of your voice. And that my voice, in a sense, would recede and that you will excel and exceed above me and that your presence and your spirit would fill this message and that you would anoint it to your own glory. I'm in your hands and Lord, I cast myself upon you with great joy and I trust in you and I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In your name, amen. You know, I've been wanting to do a little uh, message on this, and it's just, I guess I wait for, for time for, you know, there's things I like to share or teach, but sometimes I don't share them right away. I'll let them, I'll let them marinate, and I'll wait for the Lord. And today I, I wanted to give a message because for the next three days or so, our anniversary is on the second. So. My husband's taking some time off, and so we're going to spend some time together. So you probably won't see me again probably till Thursday. Who knows, maybe earlier. But anyways, just in case you're like, where's Joni? It is our anniversary, and we want to spend that nice time together. So before I go any further, um, back to what I was saying. You know, as I read the word day by day, month by month through the years, there are certain words that stick out with me and they start to become, they start to create like a little framework in my mind. And I start to see that same word and it'll show itself through the entire Bible. And I know that I've over a period of time, there comes a moment where now I'm able to see it and I'm able now to be quickened by the spirit and to share it with you. Because see, I believe with all my heart and I know it as I'm fully known, that Jesus Christ loves you and he wants you to know that beyond anything else, that he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother and there's no one like him. And he always is on the move. God is always on the move in our lives. He's always on the move in this world. If you really think about it, and if you really just get quiet about it and think about it, God is always on the move and we want to be on the move with him. And he's always on the move in us. And we want to be people that move with God, right? I know I do. I know you do too. So otherwise, really, you wouldn't be here because you want to grow in the grace and knowledge of God and, and you want to stretch. You want to be stretched and you want to stretch. And that's the word that I'm going to be talking about today. And I'm going to 
start with verses and I'm going to use God's own word, what is written in the Bible for you, for me. And there's no better way to do it than for me to springboard off of the word. I'm going to begin with this about what God stretches out and how he stretches himself to us. And so here we go in Isaiah 42, 5. There's many other verses about the creation, but this is the one I chose. Thus saith God, the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it and spirit to them that walk therein. You know, there's other scriptures that says that he stretched forth the, the, uh, the heavens above the earth. And there's all these different scriptures, but this is the culmination. This is the one that says it all right here. And so when you see that in the beginning, when he stretched forth the heavens, I mean, we have that today, don't we? We can look up at that sky and it's limitless. And we know that he stretch forth the earth and he stretch forth the seas and we see these things that are so great that we see his greatness and what he stretched forth and that's what i want to begin with because not all so he began with stretching forth the creation of this world and then he created us on it and he put people on it and he gave us the spirit his well, our spirit, our which is the principle of our life. Of course, it died with Adam and Eve, but we've been regenerated, and been made new in the born again experience, being born again from above. Amen. And another thing I want to say is God stretches Himself to us. Here's a couple of verses: Deuteronomy 9:29. Yet they are thy people. Moses is saying this to him in prayer. Yet they are thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest out by thy mighty power and by thy stretched out arm. And I look at Exodus 3.20, when Moses turned aside to the burning bush, and God spoke these words to Moses. He said, I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all the wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And in another verse, in 7 verse 5, it says, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. I wanted to sneeze. <laughs> I don't want to sneeze right now. I'm going to revisit that. You know, and so he chose Moses and Aaron. And we know that Moses, he stretched forth his rod over the rivers, over the streams. He stretched forth his rod over the land and again over the sea. Aaron even stretched his hand over the water. And miracles were done to show that God is greater than all things. Because it begins with him that he is the one who has stretched forth the heavens and stretched forth the earth and and stretched forth the line upon it and laid the the foundations of that vast foundation under the sea he stretched that out too we know joshua drew not his hand back wherewith he stretched out the spear until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of the ai there's so many scriptures where it speaks about holding out your hand, but I want to keep going. And so he stretches himself to us. It says that he brought out the people by his mighty power and his stretched out arm. He's still doing that today. God is still draw, stretching forth himself to you every day in your life and in this world. We see it every day, even to those that don't know him, because it says for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. It says that several times 
than Isaiah. That's 921. I'm not going to read every scripture. It says the same thing. But the people of Israel, they were sinning against God. And he just kept having long patience with them. And he was t telling them what you're doing wrong. And this is what you're doing. Return to me. They wouldn't return. They kept going. But it kept saying, for all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And his hand is stretched out to you. It's stretched out to the inhabitants of this earth. He doesn't have favorites. He's not just going to pick one and not the other. All that call upon him shall be saved. That's how we all come to Christ. We come in the filthiness of his rags. We come in our filth of transgression. We come in our besetting sins. It doesn't matter how bad you've sinned. And it says that God is angry. It says, um, for God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. But yet it says his hand is stretched out still. His hand has never been withdrawn. His hand has never been withdrawn and it shall never be withdrawn from us, from any people. Oh, his anger endureth but a moment, but in his favor is life. Joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for a night, but his joy, Jesus Christ is your joy. He, he comes in the morning. Let me go on. Sometimes God is going to stretch us. I think of Matthew 12, 13, when he said, and it's in Mark as well, but he said there was a day where he went into the temple and the Pharisees were in there and they brought a man whose hand was withered. Um, according to uh, scholars, how they came up with it, I don't know, but they said that uh, most likely he was a man that worked with his hands and obviously couldn't work anymore. So his hand being withered showed that there was some kind of an accident that happened with his hand. And sometimes God's going to stretch you and stretch me, maybe in an illness, maybe in something where it looks like there's no cure, no answer. Maybe he's going to stretch you when you think, I have nowhere to turn. I have nowhere to go. That can be an endless thing I can talk about where there's things that it says, trouble not the master any further. Thy daughter is now dead. And but we we realize that the master, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our master and Lord, will say to you, stretch forth your hand. And, you know, there wasn't bells and whistles. There wasn't thunder. There wasn't any earthquakes. There wasn't rocks being shattered before them and fire, you know, mountain on fire. He's he will ask you sometimes in a very hard thing, or maybe your faith is it like that of an atomic particle, and he'll say, stretch forth your hand. In that moment, and by faith, you say, I'll do it. I'll stretch forth my hand. And then look at what that happened. That man's hand was made whole as the other. And that doesn't just mean a physical healing. It can mean a broken life. Stretch forth your hand. Stretch forth your hand to me. And believe me for the impossible. For God is the God of the impossible. He is your God of the impossible. And what he did then, he will do now. Yes, he was showing forth his glory on earth. That's why he was doing all these amazing, powerful, radical miracles. And I don't believe in cessationism where there's no more gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you're just saved and then you go on. No way. Uh-uh. No way. He's telling all of us whatever something is in our life that is dead because that man's hand was dead if there's something in your life that is dead your faith is dead your marriage is dead you're in a dead end you don't know how you're going to pay all your bills that there's a there's a deadness in your life stretch forth your hand and i believe with all my heart that god will honor that hand being stretched forth to him 
and sometimes he'll ask you to stretch forth your hand into somebody else's difficult situation. He'll have you go beyond what your norm is in helping other people. See, God doesn't want us as his people to be like the Pharisee, a certain priest and a certain Levite who saw a man, a Samaritan man, who was beaten and robbed and stripped naked and left for dead and to say, oh, well, that's that's somebody else's ministry. Uh, mm, I'm on I'm on my way to an important conference, but God wants us to be full of oil and full of wine and that we can spend it out on those that need it. God tells us he told the Israelites, when you go into that land and you see a stranger, you see the poor, it says you stretch forth your hand and you open it up wide. You know, don't be concerned about not giving. I want to break right here because there's a story in 1 Samuel where uh, uh, David was at war with the Philistines. And he said to himself, oh, that I had drink from the well of Bethlehem. And a few of his mighties broke forth through uh, an army of Philistines. And they went to that well and they brought water back. And they gave it to David. And David poured it out upon the ground. See, those men stretched themselves. But that was so much for David, for him to receive of that glory from people that stretched themselves for him. See, when you stretch yourself, you're really stretching yourself unto God. You really are. Because if you know the Lord and you love him and you're a servant of Jesus Christ, God will never allow that living water to flow forth from you. And even material supplies to help others. Look, again, I speak about this often because it's on the table. We have to be the kind of people that we say what he was in the past, he is today and forever will be. And we are his people. And we're called by his name. And you know what? Yeah, it looks impossible. There's no, there's empty shelves at the grocery store. Impossible situations are upon us. But I'm going to stretch forth myself. I'm going to stretch forth my hands unto God. I'm going to stretch myself in prayer. I'm going to stretch myself. Because you see, in the suffering and in the impossible, that's when we're stretching and stretching. Because you see things, Jesus says, on earth before he died, he says, things concerning me have an end. But that end meant the end of Satan's power. His end, meaning this body that God prepared for me is going to die. It's going to be crucified. This blood's going to be shed. But on the third day, I'll rise again. And then the end of Satan will start immediately. And a life that has no end. The endless world of heaven. Christ within us. The end, the power of an endless life. You know what I believe? I believe, it says in Job chapter 5, I will deliver thee in trouble. Yea, in six, how does he say it? He says in Job, let me just go there really quick because I want to say that word. I love his word and I want that word to be in my mouth. And, you know, there's nothing like the word of God. It will remain forever. And I look forward to the day that I go to heaven and I'm, I don't know. I don't know how it really is going to be, but I know that there's something in me that says, I want to be able to get there and I want to be able to say the words. I want to see David and say, I trusted in the Lord with all my heart and he brought it to pass. I committed my way into the Lord. I trusted in him. You know, I want to say those words to everybody. But it says here in chapter five of Job, it says, he shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. 
thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh, neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth, for thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. And thou shalt know that thy tabernacle shall be in peace, and thou shalt visit thy habitation and shall not sin. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Thou shalt come to thy grave in a full age, as a shock of corn cometh in his season. Lo, this we have searched it, so it is. Hear it, and know thou it for thy good. But see, I believe where it says he shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil befall thee. You know what I think? He's looking for people who go with him to deliver with him in the six troubles and in seven evils. He's looking for those that will stretch themselves in the famine, in the wars, in the catastrophes, in the desolations. That's when we stretch ourselves unto God and see he's always stretching himself to us. You see, there's time, there's a, there's going to be a time. I, uh, and this is a special one. Sometimes you're going to get some news that's very bad. And that maybe um, you've been given a terminal um, diagnosis. And of course, believe to the end. Believe to the end that God will heal you. Never stop believing. And it doesn't have to mean that you have to work up froth because it says you have to believe in your heart, but he is sovereign. And sometimes God will take those people, no matter how much they prayed, but he prepares them at the very end. I've seen it. I've been around. When, see, he already knows. And. I don't want to go down that trail. Um, he makes decisions. I believe with that. But if that person, and I'll say that person, not really speak to you, but perhaps I should, if you are that person that is going to go to heaven, then you're knowing it already. You see, there's a special peace he gives to those he's going to take home. It's not the peace that we all have when we go, Lord, give me peace in this trial. That is a power. But there's a special grace of peace that he gives to those. And he begins to speak to them inwardly. And he gives them this special grace. When I look at John 21, 18, it says, Verily, verily, he's Jesus is speaking to Peter. He said, When thou wast young, thou girdest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee and carry thee whither thou wouldest. You know, he's saying, you know, when you were young, you went, you know, when you were young, Notice he says, when you were young and when thou shalt be old, and maybe you're not old, but you're young. But if that's the age you're going to go home to be at, then that's your old, being old, <laughs> in a sense. You see, babes in Christ are nursed. They're not crucified. See, when you're young, you have certain liberties. Thou walkest whither thou wouldest. But when they grow old and they grow up, let's just say they grow up, not old. And when they grow up into spiritual adulthood, all that has changed. And yet they would not go back to the other easier life for they are nearer their Lord now, far nearer than ever before. 
You see, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I've lived long enough to know and to tell you I've seen it myself over and over again. Where we, I have prayed for others, you know, with groups of others. Let me tell you a story about God stretching himself to a woman who stretched herself. There was a uh, young man I know. He was a youth group pastor. And he was married, a young man with a wife, two little babies, one right after the other. Well, she got cancer. And of course, everybody was praying and praying and praying for two years. Everybody, beautiful people, hearts being poured out. Heal her, Lord. Heal her. She's your daughter. I mean, I was part of that group praying, entering into the labors of the others, you know, into the works of others, entering into their labors, their labors, labors entering into mine. And we were praying and praying. And um, one day I was on my knees on the ground and I just, I just felt to ask just to pray. I just, I got down on my knees and I said, Lord, I pray for and all of a sudden, I had this waking vision, like my eyes were closed, but I can see like a movie, like something playing in front. And I had a vision and I saw a lamp, like the kind you walk around with, you know, you know, the light is inside. And I saw a lamp right in front of my face and I saw the flame and little by little, I saw this flame slowly go out and I knew but I didn't tell anybody because they would say I mean it would hurt everybody and that was there's things you need to keep to yourself and I I kept that to my heart but I knew what it meant that Jesus was going to take her home well shortly after that I think it was maybe a week later I got a call and a friend of mine said to me she passed away and I said oh Okay, and she said, I have a story. I want to tell you what I heard. Well, she was at home and dying, and her husband was sitting near her, and family was out in the living room. He was sitting next to her, just watching her, waiting for that moment. And that he got thirsty, and he left the room for a minute to get a glass of water. But he came in, and she was completely out. She was ready to go. He walked in the room and he saw her standing on the bed, her hands lifted as high as you can lift them. And she's looking up and she cries out, I can see them. I can see them. I can see the angels and they're beautiful. And she laid down. And moments later, she went into glory. Angels, I'm sure, stretching forth their hands to carry her into the beautiful city where Christ dwells. You know, sometimes God stretches his hand against the wrath of our enemies. That's what it says in Psalm 137. You know, it says here, let me just, I shouldn't have closed this so quick. What's a good save? Um, let me just get there real quick. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Look, the sons of thunder, James and John, they had just come from Samaria and they rejected the Lord and they left. And James and John said to Jesus and John in Luke chapter nine, I think it's 54. But he said, don't quote me as I know it's 50 something. But he, they said, uh, Master, would thou have us to call down fire from heaven and to consume them as Elijah did? But Jesus turned and rebuked them and said. He rebuked them and said, you have no you do not know what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives. He came to save them. 
And you see, we have to be very careful. Yeah, we are going to experience enemies in the flesh. They'll hate us for whatever reason. They'll cause us all kinds of headaches. It could be enemies, even in your own home. It could be enemies at your work. It could be your next door neighbor. Sometimes you have enemies. You don't even know why they're your enemies. All of a sudden, they just don't like you anymore. We've all experienced that. And you know what? That's hard to take. You know, but what's even harder to take, see, there's an enemy. There's two words, enemy and adversary. Those are two different things. They have two different meanings. An enemy is somebody who just, you're at work, he, sits, he or she sits over there or stands over there. They don't like you, whatever. You just go to work. It is troubling. It bothers you. And sometimes it's wearing because they do emanate hate. Be it, you can go home. You don't have a rela personal relationship with them. It's enemies somewhere out there. They just don't like you. But an adversary is one that is employed in uh, pursuing you and doing you in and causing you trouble and setting you up and bad mouthing you and staining your reputation and all of that. And there comes a point, and this is all over the Bible, David's famous for it. But when you cry out, though you're walking in the midst of that trouble, David even said, he said, thou wilt revive me. Though I'm walking in the midst of trouble, he turns to the Lord because he knows God will stretch forth himself to him and deliver him. He said, thou shall stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies and your right hand shall save me. So he's stretching forth his hand is dual. He's stretching forth his hand against the wrath of the enemy. And at the same time, he's stretching forth his right hand to deliver. See, the stretching forth of God and the stretching of ourselves and our stretching of him stretching us and all these ways that I've ex I described to you, they have no end. They have no end as long as we live in this earth. But I praise the Lord that in heaven, it says his kingdom has no end. We're going to ever be stretched forth in the kingdom within heaven. We are in the eternal place. He, it is unsearchable. It'll always be unsearchable and past finding out. Isn't that wonderful? And yet in heaven, in the millennial kingdom, it says princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. And that says basically all the kingdoms of the world. When Jesus comes back in the second coming and sets up his millennial kingdom, he stretches forth. They will stretch forth their hands and they will worship the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So understand God is a stretching God. He is ever stretching, ever stretching you, ever stretching himself to you, ever stretching himself for you. And he will never stop stretching his love to you, stretching his hand of forgiveness, stretching forth his mercy that never ends, that endureth forever. He's ever stretching that love that is unsearchable ever stretching himself ever stretching himself to you stretch yourself to god make sure you do it all the time and don't let satan talk you out of it don't let yourself talk you out of it be like the man with the withered hand stretch yourself to him anyway doesn't matter what it looks like it doesn't matter what it sounds like jesus christ he says i am the first and i am the last I am he that was and he that is the and for I am he that is and and what who was and who is to come the almighty don't be afraid stretch forth your prayer to God and do it with all your heart because you know why your prayer is really a song in his heart and when you cry unto God and you stretch, you pour out your soul and you stretch forth your hands unto him. He receives it because he delights in you. 
and he delights to stretch forth his mercy upon you. Stretch forth yourself to God, and forevermore you will ever live in his presence here on earth and in heaven. Never ever seen the end of his stretching love and stretching life. O oh, life for life, Emmanuel.